It's great being here, great being with you, the body of Christ, and just thank God for you. And uh, my heart is that whatever is being given will move into your spirit and you will be, uh, there'll be a transformation, including me. You know, there's no, uh, there's nothing that can pass through you that doesn't leave its residue. (laughs) And so uh, I just thank God for today. Um, This happens to be our anniversary. uh, And uh, it's wonderful. Uh, You know, I was sharing with her that I do love my wife more today it's been, it grows continually. There's no end to love. Love is eternal. Love remains. And uh, she's been such a precious a help. Uh, a, a, one who stands with and undergirds, strengthens, uh, is loyal, is true. I mean, there's not enough adjectives that I can give to express uh, how I feel and the thanksgiving to God for my wife, for my sweetheart. And uh, we've been married now 53 years. Can you imagine that? I can't. Oh, my goodness. 53 years. 53 years. And, you know, uh, I hardly, I don't even feel that old. She doesn't look that old. Right. And uh, you know, I used to be able to say that too, but you know, <laughs> you know, some, some guys that are, you know, they think that they still look in the mirror in the same way. And they'll say, well, guess. You know, maybe the guy's 70 years old and somebody guesses 80. <laughs> I stay away from that anymore. But uh, I'm, uh, I'm thankful for, for the health that God has given me and, and the strength and endurance uh, over the years. We've been in ministry almost 50 years. And uh, that in itself, you know, you, you need, that's an endurance situation <laughs> sometimes. But it's, it's, a, it's full of great, great rewards and great joy. So I'm really thankful for, for my sweet Sue. And uh, I'd like her to come up. She has some things to share with you this morning before, we, before I get into my part. And uh, so I'm going to have her come up. This is Sue Madison. happy to be able to share our anniversary with you all. When, um, <clears throat> when Kathy called us and uh, talking about coming and talking about possible dates, and she said, well, you wouldn't want to come on your anniversary, we thought, we can't think of any place else we'd rather be, to, or who else we'd rather be with to celebrate with. So we're, we're happy to be here. And um, yeah, it's seems like yesterday until I start thinking about all the stuff that's happened. <laughs> and then it does seem like a little longer than that. Um, it's been quite an adventure. And uh, yeah, 50 years in ministry requires, requires some endurance, but it also has been awesome. And uh, God has, has taken us to some wonderful places, and we've seen just awesome, wonderful things happen in him. And uh, so I'm, I just feel very thankful this morning. But I want to thank you all, too, for your prayers for our grandson, Micah, and uh, to let you know that he has been um, diagnosed as cancer-free. Amen. 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 And the situation with his feet and legs and ankles, 
is uh, the MRIs have shown that it's beginning to heal, that his body is beginning to produce what needs to be produced to heal all of these stress fractures. And it was just a multitude. I mean, the doctor just shook his head. And uh, so he turned uh, 13 on the 5th of July. He was six when he had, on his sixth birthday, he had his first um, chemo shot. And so it's, it's been a very long time. And uh, his whole childhood has been taken up with a lot of pain, a lot of sickness. And uh, we're looking forward to see what God's going to do now. And Micah's attitude is this. <clears throat> this is not what he would have chosen for his life. But he wouldn't trade it because he knows he would not be where he is with God if it hadn't been for this. And I think that's, that's really remarkable for a child that's just turned 13 to, uh, to feel that way about the whole thing. So we ask for you to continue to pray for him. We thank you for that because there is a lot of healing. There's a lot of, uh, you know, his body needs to recuperate from all that's happened to it. And there's something that I feel like the Lord wants me to share with you. I think maybe I've told you this before, but it's been a while, so I'll remind you. Um, we just always feel the awesome presence of God in this place and believe that it is a gateway to the heavenlies. And um, you're a small little group of people. How many people turned the world upside down when Jesus was raised from the dead? There's more of you here, there, here, I believe, than was there then. And uh, it's a small town in an out-of-the-way place. God loves to do things in small places and to despise not the um, day of small things because it grows into something great. And his, his spirit and his power is here. <clears throat> is there anybody here that never heard Don tell about the vision that he had in Kansas of the map and the flaming arrow? You know how when we first came back to the Midwest in 1982 from Southern California, he drove into the parking lot of a church where he was going to be ministering. And when he got out of the car, he looked up, and in the heavens he saw a map. And he saw a flaming arrow come and land in Kansas. And pieces of fire flew off all over and started to burn. And the edges of the map started to burn, and it turned into a flame. And took that to mean that the revival that God was bringing in these days was going to, that, you know, it, would, it was just a, a picture of that. And uh, so, you know, we've been looking to see that. We see it here and there. We see those little flames sprout out here and there. And uh, in 19... 99, I believe it was, we were driving to Marion, Kansas, might have been 2000, we were driving to Marion, Kansas, where there had been meetings going on nightly and sometimes in the daytime and God was moving in an awesome way and this lasted for, what, a month, two months? I don't know, it was a while mm -hmm. and um, I hadn't been there. Uh, my mother was living with us then. We couldn't leave her alone. We had to have somebody come in and stay. And so, but I was going to go this one time. Don came home to get me. And uh, we were driving over there, and it was in the fall, so it got dark early. And we're driving across the plains of Kansas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's just my mind was wandering. It was dark. And my mind was just kind of wandering, and I was thinking about that, and thinking about the night sky and that, that vision of the flame. And 
went through my mind. I wonder if that was a prophecy of what's to come and we won't be here uh, or if it's going to still happen in our lifetime. And my mind just went on other places. I wasn't really pondering it. And we came to the church. And most of the people there I had never met before. And there was an African pastor there. No, I'd never seen in my life. And Don introduced us. And then he went off to do something. And this man and I were talking. And he stopped right in the middle of what he was saying. And he looked at me and he said, you will live to see it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I just stood up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And uh, so I believe it's on the threshold that we are seeing the beginnings of things. And you're definitely a big part of that. God has you here for a specific reason. And he hears your prayers, he hears your devotion, he hears your love. He hears your committal to him and your willingness to do anything he asks. And he cherishes you, he cherishes your heart. And that was what I wanted to tell you. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Um... I want to share a few things that I, I saw while we were in worship. Uh, and it, 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 it began, uh, you know, when I've been meditating and sharing in, in, in my uh, prayer and in reading and searching out what God would have, you know, from me to the church. Um, and I saw... I saw uh, people, uh, just people coming here to, to this ministry. Uh, it's but not by mistake you have that place out there because this would not hold what's coming. And this is the beginning. This year it will be the beginning of that. You're going to, I mean, people will come from the north, south, east, and west to here. People uh, will, because m many people are disenchanted with what has been represented by the church. Yes. And you have, you've, you've hung tough. You, you've, you've, you've been true to the vision and to the heart of the Father and to progressive revelation to where he's, he wants to take, take you. But that's the way what God wants to take the church. And you've been faithful to, uh, and loyal to your pastors and the revelation that have come from them. And you've been faithful one to another to love one another and be a body. And this is the, the profile, this is the DNA that God wants to make the church out of. The loyalty and the union with one another. And Jesus is coming for, uh, he's coming for, to be part, uh, to be, make the head of a body. Because, I mean, he's the head of a body. The fullness, the Bible says, of him fills all in all. And the body is the fullness of Christ, you know, in the spirit. It's to be, made, it's to be a house of God. It's to be a, a spiritual dwelling for the Father to dwell in, in the Son. The Son not only represents Jesus, but it represents us, his body. You don't separate the head from the body. But see, we have to grow up into the head in all things. In other words, the maturity that's here in terms of Jesus, has to be in the body. And there's got to be a line where, uh, you know, the head's not saying one thing and the body doing something else. That's called spastic. <laughs> or some other disease, uh, you know, 
you know, you want your arm to do this, and it's going off this way and going off that way. And, uh, and people, there are people that have that affliction. You know, you got, you know, uh, MS and people that, that are afflicted with this, and they don't have control, complete control of their bodies. Um, and so, but Jesus is coming for a church that, that when he says this way, that's where, we're, that's where it's going. When he says this way, that's where it's going. It's to be the fullness of him. And that's a high calling, you know, that's, that's a high calling. But people are, that have been disenchanted out there because it, even the government of the church has been uh, sideways. You can't, go, the church is not governed like uh, Macy's department store or some kind of a corporation. It's, it's governed in a different, it's di governed by the Spirit of God, but working through, you know, what was called the fivefold ministry. I mean, it's, it's a government that has its administration and its operation, but it, it, it's a government that's not like a man's government. It's not a hierarchical type of an operation. Although there's great, uh, you know, honor given to those that, that labor in, in the word and in prayer and in, as, as the servants of the body. And there's great authority as well. But the authority isn't done by title, the authority is done by function and anointing. You know, just because the people are called pastors doesn't make them pastors. Pastor is an operation. Pastor is one, you know, apostle. You know, uh, I was doing the work of, uh, of an apostle before I even knew what one was. Because it, it's, it's the gift. It's the gift. It's the ascension gift of Jesus Christ. And I, I don't go around, I don't have a card that says Apostle Don. You know, and says, well, you know, you've got to, you know, I'm, I'm here now, you know. But... Uh, Paul, Paul said, you know, he says the apostles are the least in this thing. They're looked at as the least sometimes. You know, it depends on what, how people recognize. And we're not, you're not going around looking for recognition. You're going around just being who you are and what God has made you. But you're, you're, you're a servant. You're a servant of the entire body. Jesus said, I'm not come among you as a master. The world is like this, you know, which has its own masters. But I come to you to, not to be served, but to be a servant, to serve you, to serve the body of Christ, to serve the Father's interests. And that's why we're here. But I see uh, lines of people coming to this place where the power of God is, and the release of God's power is here. And healing and miracles and these things are, are, will be done as a point, just while you're worshiping God, people start getting healed. You know, it's not going to be necessarily the man of faith and power that comes in, <laughs> you know. But all of you have a part of the healing process of people, emotional, emotional. Um, physical, uh, whatever, healing and establishment. But God has a great uh, a reward for you. You're going to see your children coming that's been running around and, and you know, and it, uh, you know, they've been here and there and in the air, whatever they're doing. But they're going to come to be established. They're going to see that that where they're going in the, in the way that things are in this world, there's got to be some stability. There's got to be some people that say, hey, this is the way you walk in it. Yeah. And so I saw these people coming in. And it's like you're, uh, you're a nucleus of the cell. A nucleus of the cell. 
and within you is the DNA for the body. Because every, uh, every body is made up of many, many different cells that has the same DNA in it. But it manifests in different ways. See, and so that's the way the body of Christ is. But the same DNA is in all. You know, and it's, it's the DNA of the Father. It's the DNA of the Son. And the, Ho and the Holy Spirit. He's the life that brings forth, you know. And so that's one thing. And that's a promise. You can look, beginning to look at this year. If you, all you need to do is just continue being who you are, you know. And, what, and people are going, people that are not used to the, the form, you know, the, it, the people that are hungry will get past that and move into the form and... Uh, of worship and praise and so forth and so on and and as they become acclimated to it they get their hands going from here to here you know we all didn't start out like this we all didn't start out ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, you know this we didn't start out that way so through patience and and through uh our, our growth in the Lord, we became more liberty. Our, we, our body lined up with what the Spirit was saying, see. The body has to catch up, even with healing. It's got to catch up with God's promise and with your redemption. We're all catching up with redemption. It has, it's perfect. See. It takes, it takes, it takes time. And patience. Now, it could happen just like that. It can happen, and and yet you're you know you've been moving faithfully in the, in one kind of a mode that has been it's been long, and some of it has been tedious and hard and slow. You say, oh my goodness, you know it. You gain this and you lose that, you know, and so forth and so on. But you know what? Uh, he's brought us to a place where he is able to accelerate what's going on. And that's why so many people in the world today, I mean in the body of Christ, in God's people are coming to a screeching halt as far as they're, they've been bouncing off the walls. And time has been the taskmaster. Well, <clears throat> between the time between your watch and your cell phone <laughs> and all of this and the technology of the day and the computer and all of these things which can be tools but they're not to be your masters. Time is not to be your master. We have dominion over time. And I'm going to get into that in, in the word here. To, to, to bring the word that I have given. But that, I wanted you to be aware, uh, you know, of, of the coming, uh, moving in. Continue the process of the DNA, and, and even more that God's going to unveil to you. But, but don't be surprised when you start, when people will start coming. Because they, they, they want, they, they're looking for an oasis. It's a dry and thirsty land, there's some out there. And a lot of stuff, you know, disappointments. Disappointments. Don't ever let your disappointment stop you from the appointment. There is an appointment. And so, uh, uh, that's one thing. Then I saw... Then I saw... Uh, Sister, uh, what's your name? What is it? Bethany. Bethany. Oh, my goodness. Bethany. And I saw, uh, you know, God has ministry for you this morning. Uh, and it may be uh, later on, but, but Bethel has something that I believe God's going to give her, give her for you. And I didn't, I didn't know your first name. 
but she's Bethel and you're Bethany. And Bethel means the house of God. And Bethany, I think, has a, what does it mean, do you know? What is it? House of Psalms. So the house of God and the house of Psalms. And, and that's what you are, Bethany. And that's where God is taking you. That you, God is, is uh, he's going to, and, and what I see as you grow is uh, you're going to be getting dreams. You're going to be getting uh, understandings. It's going to go beyond your, own, your age. You're going to, God is going to bring you into a realm that will give you also the prophetic utterance. In other words, you're going to see things that God's going to show you. You're going to have dreams and visions, you know, and God is going to bring you into a place where you're going to be able to minister by the Spirit to many, especially young, the younger ones that can, that, you know, but he set you apart to be that and to show them the ways of life, real life. But you're going to have you're going to be given words for people in the in the days to come, and I don't know uh, you know you may already be doing that, but you're going to God is going to give you insight, and He's going to give you revelation in the truth, as you become as you are faithful in the the, the environment here. God is going to raise you up, and give you. Uh, Ministry that goes beyond uh, fun and games. You know, fun and games. I mean, you can have fun, you can have games, but but it's not going to be uh, a bunch of stuff that draws people to church. It's going to be the power of God, and they're going to and 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 out of this is going to be a whole group, a youth group, that's going to be so awesome. But God is is given you. It's going to be known by the supernatural. It's not going to be just youth group as, and and don't don't even acquiesce to your age. The age is just numbers. It's just numbers. You know. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Age is just numbers. She's this little gal. She's she's an angel. And she she within the whole picture of praise and worship her moving around here is there, there's there's power in what she's doing and god is is blessing i mean there's a blessing she's like a little angel going around you know <laughs> and and uh, you know it's a blessing it's a blessing I'm, i mean i rejoice in that and uh, children really, and the young people really, there's a, within young people today, there are, there are attributes that, that's, that only can be used by the Lord Jesus Christ and as they come to Jesus into the kingdom. So those are things that, and I, I want, uh, uh, maybe at the end when we, you know, as we go through the ministry that, uh, Bethel can give you a word. I don't know what she'd give. It doesn't make any difference. It's like when, a lot of times when you stand before somebody, you may have maybe a few words for them, but as you're there, God can just, will release that. And so, uh, anyway, uh, but I, I, those are the two things actually I saw in praise and worship. And maybe there's some other stuff that, that he'll give me on a personal level uh, for the church. Um, but I want to I want to share with you some things that uh, uh, that I believe he gave me to uh, uh, and, and beginning. Uh, I like I'd like us to turn to Job twenty two, and this is a a favorite word. Uh, of mine, Job 22 and the 27th verse, starting at the 27th verse, uh, 
And, you know, through the old, what we call the Old Testament, the Old Testament wasn't called the Old Testament. It was called the Word of God. It was, it was God's Word. And it still is. People say, well, you know, we just read the New Testament. The New Testament wasn't even in existence. The real New Testament is sitting right here. But uh, uh, that's not to take anything away from the Scripture. But the Testament and the testimony is in the house. In the house of God. The testimony is in here. And you can know Scripture and not have the testimony in here. The Ark of the Covenant is in us. See? And so, uh, uh, it's, in the, it's in here, in this house, in the corporate house. And so, uh, you'll find nuggets of word that's within the Bible. You'll find the nuggets of the Word, and their truth is just as powerful to now as it was then. Even more so. Why? Because we have one, we have Jesus as the guarantee. He is the, he's, he is mediating the power of the Word, because He is the Word. He was the Word made flesh. And so, uh, uh, here it is. It says, you will make your prayer to Him, and He will hear you. And you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing. You will also declare a thing, or decree a thing. You know, kings don't, Kings decree and declare. And we're kings and priests unto God. We are kings. He is the king of kings. Now, kings make declarations. Kings make decrees. This is the way it is. And that it will, then they're not, they're not bouncing off the walls trying to make it happen. Those that hear the decree are put into motion by the decree. That's the authority. And that's what we have living authority at the right hand of God. Because we're there with him. And we've been given his name. And his name basically means that we're here in his stead. His name means his stead. He's there and our bodies are here. His life is there, and, our, and, his, and his life is also in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So we have, uh, uh, we have the earthly manifestation of the heavenly call and the heavenly operation, the heavenly authority is put into motion. He said, all power, before he left, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore, in the light of who, uh, what power I have, you go in my name, in my stead, and do what I did. Continue doing what I'm doing, and greater things than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. He, go, he went into the place of, and sat down as a man, but he was also representing us. He was the Son of God and the Son of Man. And he represents the body, uh, his body, which is the fullness of him. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. We provide the, the living life of Jesus on the earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. He's also, the Holy Spirit was sent in what? In his name. So the Holy Spirit is here in his stead and we're here in his stead. We're here to be uh, filled, uh, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
We are the, the, the embodiment that the Holy Spirit lives in. And so, and, and so we, we must lay hold of these things and realize what God has done and, and who we are before we can exercise the authority that's given. And the enemy does not like you to know who you are. He doesn't like you to know your authority and the authority of your word. And so it, it, we decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, he says. So light will shine on your ways, and they, uh, they cast, uh, when they cast you down and you say, exaltation will come. In other words, you're put down for standing in the truth and for your declaration. And all you have to say is exaltation will come. That's a declaration. The enemy wants you to stay down. But all you must say in, in spirit and out loud and in the word, say exaltation, I will be exalted above this situation. He said, in this world you have tribulation, you have testings and trial, but be of good cheer. Now, how can you be of good cheer when he says, you're going you're gonna to go through tests and stuff? He said, I've overcome the world. That's what we're singing about. I mean, those words uh, that you sing are just awesome, awesome words. But they've got to get in our feet. They've got to get beyond. <laughs> they've got to get in our mentality. It's not just singing and, you know, it's, it's adopting what God is saying. So he says, he says this. He said, I will save the humble person. He will, he will even deliver one who is not innocent. Why will he deliver him? Yes, he will, deliver, he will be delivered by the purity of your hands. So that gives hope to our children that are out there. You know, to, to maintain our posture because there's power and there's movement toward them and not just our children, but, but other people that are out. So there's a redemptive process that happens through our word and our declarations and our decrees. I mean, heaven pays attention to it. It's not like, well, you know, we're just, this is just wind blowing. But there's power in what we say. And what we say and we believe. The Bible says. With the heart. With the, the, the center of motivation. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Unto the result. Of what you believe. And you know Jesus uh, showed us this. When he spoke to the fig tree. He spoke to a tree. You didn't know trees had ears, did you? Trees have ears. Mountains have ears. Disease have ears. I'm not, they don't look like this. But they hear. All of nature has ears because within it is knowledge. It, it doesn't reason like us, I don't think. But it has, it has comprehension. Otherwise, why would Jesus be? He said, if, if whosoever says to this mountain, he says, if you think, Peter said, hey, you know that fig tree that you cursed? 
he came up to it and, and he wasn't even seasoned for the fruit. But see, the Creator was coming. And he's looking for fruit even out of season. See, may not be a season for you to bring forth fruit, but he's looking for it anyway. And he said, you know what? I'm here. I'm hungry. Now, he's the one. He is the word that created all things. All things were made by him and for him. And without him was nothing made. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So that Word, and then the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who was that? How was the Word made flesh? It was made through the birth of Jesus Christ. The Word was made flesh. One of us. The Word that created all things. And so, uh, that word came to a tree that was created and said, I'm here, where's the fruit? And it didn't produce. He said, you're not going to bear fruit at all anymore. Now, we may think that that's unfair, but it's not. A poor fig tree, you know. It's not unfair because whenever the, tr the creator of something desires something, then it's to give out. Be fruitful in season, out of season. And so uh, he, he said, you know, uh, that's it for you. And so Peter and uh, they all went by there after he went into the temple and whipped the money changers out. Because they were, they, were bear, they were bearing bad fruit. He said, you know, this is going to be the house of prayer. And he knocked, I mean, he just went uh, ballistic over it. Now, there's reason for that, and I won't get into it. But the, the thing is, is that afterwards, Peter came out and said, you know, that fig tree, look at it. It's perished. And then he said to Peter, he said, have faith in God. He said, if whosoever says to this mountain, be thou removed from here to there, it shall be done. But, but he has to believe it in his heart and does not doubt. He that believes and not doubt, it shall be done unto him. So, uh, you know... It's important, it's just not mouth service and lip service, it's just not being, cre you know, co confessing the right thing, but it's confessing in conjunction with your belief. With the heart, man believes under righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made to the result. Mm -hmm. So what Jesus, every act that Jesus did was, was righteousness. When Abraham gave up his son, it was counted to him for, his, for righteousness. When, but it was the action of belief that, that did it. And so the, the two have to come together. Belief, not doubt, no doubt, and you'll see the manifestation. And so these are, I, I believe the, these things are very important, but the point that I want to make is that the difference that in the realm of time, because I see so much being regulated by time and people being really involved in just being, uh, time being their taskmaster. They're, they're always looking at their watch. They're, oh, let's see. We yeah, man, it's it's time to eat and time to do this and time to do that, and and it becomes our authority. And and the Lord spoke to me the other day, uh, and it and it kind of rang my bell. He said, <sighs> prophecy, 
the prophetic word is the means in which time was created. And revelation is the means that time is revealed. Just, you just think about that for a moment. So the word, you know, when you're thinking about events, you're thinking about even the happenings in the Bible, you're thinking about the prophet that prophesied those things. And sometimes it was like 500 years before it would happen, even, even the birth of Jesus. Unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That came through Isaiah the prophet. 500, about 500 years before Jesus was born. But the prophetic word put a seed in the earth that would bring forth in its, its appointment. I want you to think about Appointment, appointed time, appointed time, that which is appointed, based in the prophetic word that God has over our lives. Now God may give a prophetic word through the scripture, and God may provi provide a, 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 a prophetic word through your pastor's, God may provide a prophetic word through one of the members. But these are, this is actually creation of an event and establishment of something in the earth that would be toward your edification or building the edifice that God wants to build here. Now just think about all the prophecies and the words that have been given over this church. Not just by me, but by people that come. And that's, that's your time. That's your appointment. The watch was created by man. And the time was created the fourth day. There was a difference between the light that created all things and the light of the sun. When Moses said, you know, to God, who, who will I say sent me? And he said, I am that I am. What does that mean? That, he's speaking about his eternalness. We think in terms of objects of space and time. In eternity, there is no space and time. It is, it just is. So when you think, where is heaven? Heaven is you can't, you can't tell where heaven is because you'd have to think in terms of time and space. You know, people looking up. Well, if you were down at another planet, you'd be looking up and seeing the earth. In other words, uh, you know, but we have to learn how to live in the eternalness of the word. We have to learn how to live in the eternalness of the Word, and the Word, uh, 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 you know, that, that is a, the promise. Prophecy is based in promise. By the, uh, it says, we've been given many great and precious promises that by these we'll be partakers of the divine nature. By the promises. By promise. Promise that comes forth from here, and promise that comes forth through the, the, the human vessel that is in line. That's why scriptures are given so that there's a line that we don't, it's something that's been established. And there's a line. There's a line that's drawn. I mean, you, you don't go beyond the word. I don't, I don't believe we can go beyond the scripture that's given to us. But I do believe that we have, uh, we exercise ourselves in our generation 
through the promises that's given through the word of God, even though they were given years ago. I believe that as we move on in and progress more towards, you've got earth ascending and heaven descending. You see, and there's, there's more uh, things that are, I mean, there's more consciousness today of heaven. Why? Because things are moving that way. And he's going to bring revelation and truth about who he is. And there will be those who can walk and be moved into heaven and out of heaven. Like Jesus. Jesus moved whoo, whoosh, whoo, like that. And uh, it's, it's, but he was this... He was the son that was sent by the father, and we were sent. He said, as the father has sent me, so send I you. So the sending process. When we send somebody out to do this or to do that, there's power of sending that goes there. And the church is a sending operation. And, and, and the Bible talks about receiving him that is sent. If they receive you, they receive me. So there's a union there. If, if people do not receive you, they're not receiving him, the one that sent you. That's why when Jesus sent the, the disciples out, he said, go to a house and find those that, that would receive you. And you stay there and leave your blessing there and, and, and minister to that house and, and, and move in and out of that place. But if they don't receive you, then dust your feet off. In other words, uh, the, the, any ground that's between you is, is left with them. When people receive you, they receive him. And you say, well, you know, we can get into a false humility trip about ourselves. But we have to understand who we are, and that is, everything we are has been given to us by somebody else, by God. So we can't claim anything that will, you know, to puff up our ego. But, but we understand, we walk in that humility that's in Christ. But we don't walk in anything less than he's promised us to be. Well, you know, excuse me for being, you know. But you have to move in the authority that God has given to you in all humility. And your word, let it, uh, we, we've, got to, we've got to hold sound words. In other words, we can't be saying one thing doing something else. That's a big thing today. To find people that will do what they say. You know, saying one thing, doing something else. Not, not dependable. Oh, I'll do that when I get, you know, you know just slothful. But, but your words, uh, you know, how you use them every day, either strengthens or delineates from the word that when you really need it. Because your word equals this word. If you are living in this word, then that's the word, that, that, that's the integrity that you must move in. It's not a matter, well, you know, this is, you know. So we have to keep our words in the integrity of what we mean and, and be loyal to that which we've already said. Otherwise, we delineate, we take away from the strength of our word when it begins to move in God. Because we're saying one thing, doing something. It's just like the, <clears throat> the sons of Sceva that said, well, we cast you out, you cast the devil out. Uh, yeah, in the name of uh, the Jesus that Paul preached. And the demon says, well... Paul I know, and Jesus we know, but who are you? 
and they and and, and they went and, and uh, stripped him, and they went naked as jaybirds on the street. What a scene. But the thing is, is that, see, they were moving in an assumptive authority and a copy authority. And it's different when, when you, you don't copy other people. You know, I've seen uh, different young preachers try to copy some preachers that they, you know, and they walk like them. And even if they had a little limp, they'd limp like them and they'd sound like them. And they do think, you know, and so what it is, it, but it's not them. They think, well, this is the way it's done, you know, and they, they preach like them and so forth and so on. And, but the, 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 the thing is, is that you have to be who you are in God. And you don't, you know, you're not a second class citizen when it comes to God. He loves you, and He gave His all for you and for me. So we just have to be who we are, what God has made us to be. And, uh, and so uh, the word uh, that, that we, uh, uh, we move in, and I'm, I'm talking, I'm going to be, you know, I'm talking in relative to time now, too. Uh, in Deuteronomy 8.3. Let's go there for a minute. And he, be, he uh, begins to share why the people had to go through the wilderness. Even when it did take a long time. And he says, so he, uh, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know. Nor did your fathers know. That he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We don't live by bread alone. We don't. And when bread can mean anything that we can live by. We don't live by a job alone. We don't live by the telephone alone. We don't live by the watch alone. In other words, bread can mean the things that people feed on. But we live by every procedure out of the mouth of God. Now that's, when you're talking about a word, in fact, in the, in the Hebrew, that word, word, isn't even in there. It's the proceedings of God. Jesus, though, in, in his inter when he quoted that word, he said, every rhema that comes out of the mouth of God. Instead of logos. And that, is, that, that brings it into more of a personal operation than the logos. It's a, a personal applications. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every procedure out of the mouth of God. That's how we live. It's not, uh, you know, it, we use time, and time is, is it to be our servant, but not our master. Oh, i, I got to do this, you know. And, and, and there's people even, when you're, when you're speaking to them in relationship, that people have their stupid wa uh, their their cell phone out all the time, texting or doing something, even while other people are talking to them. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. And you get into a restaurant, and nobody, you know, if there's four people around a table, 
somebody had, there's more people around that table than what you see. There might be seven people around that table. Because they all are more. So technology is great, but, but the, the point is you have to use it within, uh, within, within its right realm, where it belongs, as your servant. So uh, we, we've got to learn how to, to uh, not be sucked into the way uh, society is moving, because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of destruction going on. But somebody has to show them the truth. Somebody has to show the young people that there is a life beyond what they're experiencing. So, uh, you know, it's time for the church to stand up and be who it is. And, you know, just what, what, you, what we were singing this morning, it's singing, you sang everything that I'm talking about. But we've got to lay hold of this, and it's got to become our, our, our life. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day our daily bread. You give us what we need this day. And we learn to live like this. We learn to live. And it's freedom. Freedom from the jurisdictions that man tries to put on us. Yeah, we live in the frameworks of certain things, and we, we move in wisdom towards all things, but we're not bound by them. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. You know, Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Jeremiah, you know, he, 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 a prophet that went through so much stuff. Man, this guy. <laughs> he, he was, a, they called him the weeping prophet, but there was really reasons for his weeping, the way the conditions were in those days. I think we need some weeping prophets today. But they just, you know, he went through all kinds of stuff. A lot of time, you know, a lot of reason to become depressed. But Jeremiah fifteen sixteen says, um, let's see. Your words were found, and I did eat them. I ate your words. And your word was in me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord of hosts. Thy words were found. You know, if you're going through a situation, look for the word that God will give you to take you through. And not just take you through, but, but bring joy to your heart. And the knowledge, you know, it's just a matter of going through in his name and the joy of knowing that on the other side of it is victory, that he's already won. The lamb is on the throne, remember that. The lamb is on the throne. Redemption rules. You were saying that this morning. It's done. It's done. And so, uh, th this is how being regulated by promise, being regulated by uh, the Holy Spirit and the promise and bringing you into the, what you see, the vision you have for your place in the body of Christ. Specifically here, because this is the training ground. See, you're ready. I mean, there's a lot of you are ready 
to move in to uh, to uh, the ministry of within the body and to be leaders in the body of Christ and be leaders in your city and so forth and so on. Whatever latitude and whatever direction is being revealed to you to move in. And, uh, you know, uh, Mike and Kathy have not been laboring in vain. They've been faithful, labor, labor, labor. Through many things, and laboring on the outside, laboring inside, and still doing it. And in afflictions, but you know, uh, even in the afflictions, they're made strong. He's made strong through the, the weaknesses that have come from time to time. He's made strong, but that strength that he has made, made strong has been applied. There's a lot of pastors. You know, there's 40 pa I, I don't know how many. The, the Many, many pastors every year just leave the ministry. People leave the church. People go here. People go there. And, it, and anybody that's a, a pastor that loves his people, he loves them all, it hurts. <coughs> and sometimes you wonder, well, what have I done? I mean, I... <laughs> you know. And I've been there. You know, I know what it, it feels like, you know. Or you get somebody that's you know, that, that's divisive within the church. But I, I have a sense that what, what's here now, that there's loyalty here, and that, there, that I believe you're ready to receive people that can be adaptable to what's already with what you're doing and what you're going and, and, and to move in the strength here rather than to be a weakness that will, you know. So I feel like that that is uh, uh, that you're going to, this year you're going to see the beginnings of this. And it's going to increase. I see this as a Zion in, 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 in Iowa. One of them. A Zion. A nation within a nation. And so, uh, now where is this word that we were looking for? Uh, Romans 10 says, the word is in thy mouth. The word of faith. And that's the word that God created all things by. He created it by faith. He called, it says, the God that, that, that calls things that are not as though they are. 